Okay, next we're going to cover Vesawas Major. We can discuss Vesawas Minor briefly. Vesawas Minor, if you think about the lumbar spine, we've got 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then you've got T12. So T12 and L1 will be the attachment of Vesawas Minor. It's actually thought of as a vestigial muscle, which means that some patients might have one and, and others might not. And then from here it goes to the iliopectineal line. The one we are concerned with is Vesawas Major, which will go from the attachment of 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and it will come off the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs and then the psoas muscle will actually converge with the iliacus which sits on this iliac fossa here. These two muscles will come down and then this is the anterior superior iliac spine, this is the pubic tubercle, there is the inguinal ligament in between and then this iliopsoas so the iliacus and the psoas will come down through and insert onto the lesser trochanter, which is on the inside part of the femur. The main action will be that it's the main hip flexor. However, if the legs are fixed, then we can have trunk flexion. So if you are doing regular sit-ups, then no doubt the psoas muscle in particular will be the main muscle for doing the abdominal curl and not the rectus abdominis. Many years ago, a guy called Yander talked about a hyperlordosis and he designed what they call the lower crossed syndrome. What that means is the pelvis is tilted anteriorly and the lumbar is increased in its lordosis. And he said that the psoas working in conjunction with the lumbar spine erector will hold you in the anterior tilted hyperlordotic position and the gluteus maximus will lengthen and so will the rectus abdominis. Yander also has a upper crossed syndrome as well.